thank you for joining today at midday you know for arit it's a pleasure to have you here you know and you started the year with a bang with faraz you know working with hansel mehta and if you could tell us about how that experience was like oh it was a fantastic experience you know uh, from beginning to end from the first time i met hansel sir and the vision he laid out for the film the fact that you know he chose actors like us uh, to 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 play these parts where you know we're always going to be incredibly grateful to him for that uh, but the process itself it was just a you know it was just a wonderful familial uh, process we were all we all got really close the cast and the crew we also shot during um, you know we shot in a bubble so that process of shooting that was you know it was it bonded us together also you know because of our single location we shot chronologically okay. and that really you know helped us with our performance so all in all just a fantastic fantastic experience. congratulations on that like i mentioned you started the year with a bang and besides that you also continue with so much uh, other work you're into theater and you know you you already written a play siachen and you have as bees in honey now coming up you're going to perform in delhi in the coming weekend so if you when it you know when it comes to talk about theater what do you think excites you the most when it comes to theater the live medium is always going to be a, a medium that is very invigorating for artists for actors uh, you know there is a live transference of energy with an audience and nothing can ever replace that you know there's a reason that it has existed for uh, for more than 2000 years while technologies you know they come and go uh, okay. so even the technology we have today we still sort of uh, go uh, uh, to the theater and watch live performances and uh, you know actors like myself we just love doing it it makes you a better actor it makes you sharper uh, you know when you're working whether you work in film or on stage mm-hmm. you know the more you work the, uh, the the sharper you get you learn finer things mm-hmm. stage work there's you know there isn't a second chance really you're in a flow when you keep going so you know it, it you need a lot of sort a sort of i mean one needs to be a good actor but also one needs to be able to focus and and be able yeah. to overcome uh, mistakes or issues that might arise during a live performance so i find all of that terribly terribly exciting but you know you mentioned the example mm-hmm. of the play that i wrote siachen i think very often as it is with as bees and honey brown as well um this often the story decides what medium it has to be told in uh, so Sorry. whether it's my play siachen or my play as bees and honey brown or uh, you know as bees is is such a such a witty such a funny play it's it's so dependent on comic timing of the actors and you know you really want to let that breathe on stage and 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 that is why it sort of you know that is why it is a play and and, and that's what is terribly exciting about it. I think you mentioned it all right, but when we talk about theater all the more, uh, and the question that comes to my mind is, what, as per you, is the major difference or fine line that we have between a theater show or a movie that we watch in a f- movie theater or a multiplex? Oh, do you mean uh, as an audience member or as a performer or a creator? As a performer. Well, as a performer, you know, like I said, it's uh, really. Um, when you're on stage uh, your uh, the advantage is um, you know there is a flow that the that that is inherent to the uh, piece of drama so you know often one okay. scene allows you to flow into another scene and 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 because you've rehearsed it uh, so many times you've also done a version of that journey before the trick is of course to take what you know and still keep it fresh you know each mm-hmm. line is said and heard for the first time when you're on stage no matter how many times you've heard it before in rehearsals so there is that challenge of keeping things fresh despite having the the luxury of rehearsal yeah. the 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 opportunity to 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 go from one scene to the next just you know because of the momentum that's created in your performance and in the performance of your co-actors so there is that with uh, uh, the stage with film of course you know it's a whole different challenge while yes mm-hmm. you do get many chances as they say many takes to often get a scene right that's not a always the case and b often um, it is the, the biggest challenge is to be able to whip mm-hmm. yourself up and get into a zone whatever that zone may be the zone that your character is in at a moment's notice 
you know uh, there is and there's 10000 disturbances all around you and you still have to sort of focus Sorry. and live in your imaginary world you know uh, that is true for both the stage and for the screen uh, so you know it, it's it's just finer points that are sort of different but it is definitely uh, branches of the same tree but in terms of like maintaining that consciousness maintaining that you know uh, concentration and how does that work for you guys oh. so you know like i mentioned that is actually one of the bigger differences between uh, the stage and and film yeah. while with film you have a lot going on in your peripherals very often there's mm-hmm. little disturbance even in a city like bombay you often wait for moments of silence before you can do your scene and and if there is a moment yeah. of disturbance then you know it's taken again so um, yes it is one of the major facets of 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 performing on stage is that you do sort of you know maintain your focus and um, despite the disturbances you kind of you know try to remain and and hold on to the truth of the scene uh, but you know that is also uh, of course not the cell phone bit but what i'm about to say also kind of represents the beauty of live performance and interactions with audiences so when you do a comedy right uh, which you know ours is quite a funny witty play uh, there are mm-hmm. there's often laughter very often there's laughter in in different places you know with each performance sometimes right um and sometimes you know there's the laughter is so much that you do have to hold on to your uh, you do have to sort of remain silent wait for the laughter to get over and then maybe speak of course i don't mean you yeah. sort of let the moment die or you uh, you know wait for 10 seconds but i mean when the, i mean definitely when the viewers are watching it and it's a funny scene they will end up laughing you will laugh yeah, right and and so then there yeah. is this balance between sort of okay do you how long do you wait for them to laugh before you can speak your dialogue again before your uh, you know before yeah. the sort of moment is not lost so you're holding on to the moment but you're still remaining silent because you're aware that the audience would not be able to hear your dialogue if uh, you say it now because they are themselves laughing yeah right? so those kind of things are the joy of performing on stage you know and uh, very often you can you know when i say the transference of energy i i mean it in a in a very sort of um it, it, it's almost in a tangible way you know when the audience is enjoying a show or engaged mm-hmm. with a show you can feel it as a performer you know your 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 breathing even with the audience is sort of synchronized in its own way and there is a tension that lingers in the air and that is what uh, an actor lives for you know uh, that and i suppose the applause at the end but yeah makes sense but i have a question that just came in my mind because you're an, you're a person who who is a writer who also acts and who also directs and is not just an actor for movies but also theater but given a choice i would ask two questions at one go here given a choice what would you prefer to be a writer or a director or when given a choice to act what would you prefer more what would you what do you enjoy more being a theater artist or a movie star <coughs> so i you know uh, i'm going to give you a very boring answer to this uh, but uh, uh, so to begin with i think you know i really like my sort of dual journey of acting and writing at the same time yeah. because you know of course i make sure that when i'm acting i'm not doing anything else and when i'm writing something i'm not um, acting in anything else uh, what happens is i spend as an actor i spruce myself up i'm around human beings i am outside my house i'm stepping out i'm going and doing things you know i am mm-hmm. telling a story by acting by being by living in a space that is not my own sort of isolated space at home so mm-hmm. there is that and then after 2 months of doing that there's nothing more that you want than to uh, sort of uh, go back uh, mm-hmm. into your own space walk five steps to your desk and tell stories for a living and then once that is done you know for a couple of months 3 months then you what you really want to do is go out and engage with the world again so on a on a sort of human uh, mental sort of energy uh, uh, space i i really um, enjoy doing both of course you know even as an artist being an actor makes you a better writer and vice versa uh, so that to sort of you know helps me each uh, sort of uh, writing helps me with acting and 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 acting mm-hmm. helps me become a sort of better writer um so that is the sort of um, the 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 answer with regards to you know where i am and who i am as a person but i also feel uh, most importantly that we are storytellers 
you know uh, we are mm-hmm. creators Correct. storytellers now like i said uh, earlier you know uh, to one of your earlier questions the story dictates the medium so if i am if i am you know i'm terribly passionate about a story that i want to tell whether it's as bees and honey drown yeah. or that crazy achin i feel that both of them are perfect as plays you know the the the, the if i can take uh, siachen because it's a stark example it's about the soldiers that are stuck on a post in the siachen glacier now the kind mm-hmm. of story that i want to tell there is no way that it should be a 100 crore budget film it just doesn't make sense yeah. the comics don't make sense the way i want to tell the story that's perhaps not the best uh, sort of way i want to do it and the same goes with you know uh, films like certain films like i don't imagine uh, mission impossible 7 could be staged as a play in many theaters around the world you know oh good god yeah <laughs> because it was this massive uh, extravaganza production with a budget of god knows how many 100 million but pragmatically mm-hmm. speaking you not really going to stage that as a play you know so each story has its own demands i think this was a great answer i think we, i even got an idea of how you like playing different roles and maintaining a balance depending on what flows your boat in that particular situation yes, yes. right yeah. so you know in the gas so that you know coming forward i am pretty sure the next question that i'm going to ask is something that has been asked to you many a times in, in the past and possibly will be asked in the future also but you know being the son of your father parish who is an iconic movie star he was a comedian known for his work throughout his career you know given that uh, do you feel there is a certain sense of uh, given the legacy that you bring with yourself do you feel there is a certain sense of responsibility that you feel on your shoulder that okay i have to prove something you know being the father being the son of my father i have a responsibility i have to prove myself as a good actor or is it like you know i want to proceed in the way i want to? yeah um you know i i i don't really uh, i i feel kind of fortunate that i don't feel burdened by that um uh, by that um, sort of expectation or that uh, that thought really mm-hmm. i remember the first time i was going to do a play about 10 years ago the one of our producers uh, devika shahani was also the producer then uh, for the play and i remember when i was sort of I never really thought of uh, you know I'd always had my own sort of identity for the play sport professionally and uh, you know I I was able to sort of be myself over there independent of who my parents are but once I was entering this field I did sort of think about that but then something compelled me to pick up the phone call my father and ask him you know how much do the plays or the, the tickets for your play cost and he said this amount that was like for <laughs> uh, the ticket of our play and that's when i said you know that's when something clicked in me and i said you know that's what it is right if you want to go watch paresh ravan yeah. you go paresh ravan stick it and you go or watch him if you want to watch me then you you know uh, buy my ticket and and come watch me and that's that's exactly yeah after that it's never really been too much uh, of a problem it it's clear i think as far as i want to say you want to proceed in the way you want to it it does not want to it does not have to be the same it can be different and you can have your own desires like for any other person in any other field or in, in life in general right but with that uh, i'm pretty sure that you have parents who are very uh, very clear, creative and they come from that field and with a lot of experience and you must have had teachers at home to guide you through the process maybe and maybe do do you remember any instance you know maybe sitting over a coffee with a father or a mother you know talking about work and anything that you really learned from them of course uh, one learns uh, everything from one's parents uh, both consciously and sort of you know on on a subconscious level uh, so if if i sort of you know take your question to mean with regards to the field we're in then absolutely you know i look at my mother the work she does whether it's in education or in the field of film and theater everything she does with such passion and joy you know despite the huge number of things she's already achieved in her life you know mm-hmm. uh, no matter what her age is what uh, where she is at sort of you know but the the passion is just you know it just it just it's searing and i think that's terribly inspiring also with my father you know the for me the thing that i really wish to emulate uh, when it comes to my father is his 
his longevity you know he's been working constantly for 40 years in in a very very uh, challenging competitive industry and i think he's done that just by putting his head down and working constantly by sort of you know there are highs and there are lows um, always you know with every field especially one as sort of high stakes as ours but um, all you have to do really is put your head down keep working hard on what you're working on and mm-hmm. the rest uh, you know takes care of itself and you know uh, there's always yeah. fortune to lend a helping hand at the now so you've been an assistant director for ONG part 1 right uh, your father parish avar sir was a part of it you have worked with him together while making a movie and for, right now we have ONG 2 coming out in august right so what to take on that you know do you feel that you could do a study or an analysis okay wow this is what i worked on before and this is how different it looks uh, right now what do you what do you feel how does it, how will it work out like say for instance if you written an answer uh, for a literature paper and uh, then uh, you write the same paper later it can still differ but when you study it together like maybe okay this can could have been like this this could have been like this i'm not saying bad but it can be anything so anything that you notice anything that excites you about ONG2 coming well you know i i know very little about the about the film because i haven't uh, really worked on it in any way and i uh, you know i i i haven't been part mm-hmm. of uh, any of the Uh, the, the processes so i i don't really uh, know much about it i just hope that you know it is as well liked and well received by the audiences i hope uh, that you know it 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 receives the same love that uh, omg one received uh, and yeah always my next question to you would be in regards to the fact that again i think i can count on what are things you've done you're a you're a uh, writer you're an actor you have been an assistant director and you're you're into direction as well let's just say that you are also somebody who's into sports right you are you have been a football captain of a team uh, during college during your college years so if i may ask if if this film industry or if this creative life wouldn't have been something what was your other option for your career or did you think okay maybe this is something also i might look forward to in my career well uh, certainly if if uh, films and theater didn't work out uh, then i would have probably continued playing football uh, i been fortunate enough like you said you know to play for uh, on the national level play for uh, mumbai university mm-hmm. and also yeah. play um, i league too when i was quite young so uh, it would have definitely been football uh, i still i'm glad to say that i'm in touch with the game uh, every now and then but uh, you know i just i feel terribly fortunate to do what i am doing to be able to work in in film and theater and tell stories and you know the beauty of our field is that you don't retire at 35 or 40 you know the journey is much longer so uh, you're able to live with yeah. your innermost passion your your dearest sort of uh, thing for 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 decades on end hopefully I think uh, the industry got lucky that we have you here and we're going to see more of you for sure Very in the future. Nice. And on those, yeah, for sure. Like uh, when I saw the uh, poster of Arras, I was like. Okay, because at that point of time, the the actual poster it was very unrecognizable for me. Like, who is this person? Then when I later read about it all the more, uh, and I was like, okay, this is how it comes forward. Because every every other person, some way or the other, is some linked in some way, or you read about it and then you understand what what story do they bring themselves, not just as an actor, but in their background or through yeah. their own actual life story, right? Yeah. So you know, with that, when it comes to the future, where do you see yourself as? Uh, i would just say as an artist i would not just i would not say writer director actor nothing i would just say where do you see, see yourself and do you wish to be known as somebody who's versatile in his style oh, absolutely you know one wants to be able to keep uh, uh, sorry have a wide range uh, when it comes to your work yeah. and, and to be able to be able to do different things don different hats play different kinds of roles write different kinds of uh, films plays so um you know i just uh, i think for me the goal is like i said you know the goal is to keep working uh, the it's it is a marathon it's not a sprint you know you want to sort of <laughs> keep your head down if i am uh, working in film television uh, or plays maybe 30 40 years down the line it'll have been a good life i think tell us more about your future projects like what are you working on what is coming forward like you mentioned the genius cinema movie which has been written by right 
so uh, you know i'm terribly excited about uh, what's coming up uh, the uh, play that we're doing this uh, weekend on the 22nd and 23rd of july at uh, the kamani auditorium in delhi and there's another play that i've written uh, that we will have uh, shows in bombay in uh, late august and early september uh, there's also the the film like you said that i've written uh, going up on geo cinema it's called jo mm-hmm. mera hai wo mera hai and uh, there's another amazon show that i've been a part of uh, that i can't uh, reveal much about right now but it's something that i'm very very excited about uh, so yeah these are the things that are coming up i'm pretty excited wish you all the best on that and all your future endeavors we are looking forward to it for sure thank you and thank yeah you. hope to see more of you every day yes. thank you so much for joining us today thank you so much for being subscribe to midday india Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.